All right, we got a test here. I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get a nice, a nice little test. The crusty crayon pizza is the pizza for you and me. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to another glorious episode of Brad's Bourbon Reviews, the podcast. I am Brad, and today I'm flying solo. I got the house to myself. I'm finally feeling better. Holly's still in New Jersey. Timmy's doing family stuff. So I just figured that I would hop on and kind of talk to you guys just a little bit. So uh, a little different. You know, a little different format than what we're used to with the with the podcast, but also, if you're only listening to this via audio, this is the first time I've done a video podcast. So this is exciting for me. Uh, I'm excited to, well, I've done it with Jedi Talk and stuff, but first time we're doing it for Brad's Bird Reviews, the podcast. So let's, I, I was kind of figuring like, what do we want to talk about today? And I, and I had a few topics in mind, but I think what I want to talk about is I'm planning another Kentucky Bourbon Trail trip. And I kind of want to just talk about it a little bit, uh, kind of give you guys my plans for the trip, what I plan on doing, what I'm going to see, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of just want to talk about the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Um, first off, if you have not gone to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail and you're a bourbon fan, it's just going to make you love bourbon more. I love it so much. I had such a friggin' blast when we were there. We were there last November. <sighs> And like, I'm a big history person anyway. Like, I love history. To me, it's just like infinitely fascinating. It was always my favorite subject in school. Um, I just have always enjoyed history. And seeing places like Buffalo Trace and, you know, uh, what, are, what are some of the ones we went to that are like historic? I'm trying to think of the other ones we went to that were historic. Mainly Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace has been around for a long time. Uh, it is such a cool distillery. Uh, where else did we go? We went to Maker's Mark, which isn't that old. Uh, where else did we go? Why am I forgetting all the places we went? Oh, Wild Turkey, Four Roses. So I just love history in general. So like the fact that I can go and get like essentially a history lesson and sit bourbon is like the coolest thing in the world to me. Uh, we stayed at a really gorgeous hotel. I think it was called the Campbell House in Lexington, Kentucky. And I just had such a friggin' blast. I just loved... I just love driving around uh, and just seeing and, and tasting and doing all the fun stuff and had some of the best meals I've ever had in Kentucky, man. That was, that was so good. <sighs> so I don't want to go do, I don't want to dwell too much into the old trip. Cause I have a video on that. If you are interested, you can go check that out. And it was, I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's like advice from me and Holly after going on the bourbon trail. So uh, it's a really cool episode. It's got a lot of views for th this channel, so it was uh, it was a fun little video to do. But I'm excited. Like I want to go do things. Like I want to go see the Stitzelweller Distillery. I'm so fascinated with that. Like it is so interesting to me that that place still exists and like they don't make like what they used to make. It's so weird to me. Like Blade and Bow is from there, and but I have a bottle of Blade and Bow and. It was one of the first bottles I ever bought when I first started getting into bourbon, only because it was seventeen dollars. It was on clearance at Target, and I grabbed it because I was like, it, "It worst case scenario, if it sucks, we'll just mix it with Coke," which is kind of what I think we did for a while. But I just gave up on. I haven't, I haven't tried it in probably a year. I uh, don't remember it being very, very good. But I'd be curious if I can do it. I might have to do a review on that soon. Uh, but I'm just like endlessly fascinated with. Not necessarily the process, but like the history of the place itself. Because like, I will say this, if you go to like multiple tours, you're going to hear the same information. You're going to hear how they ferment. You're going to see the tanks. It's going to be cool. Like, it's really cool. I think the, the, oh, we went to Woodford. That's another one we went to. I think the, uh, the coolest tour that we did as far as the process and everything, how they do it was probably Maker's Mark. That being said, I didn't go to Buffalo Trace and do that tour. We did the Taylor tour because I love history. So I wanted to kind of learn more about Colonel Edmund Hun's Taylor. So that was, I highly recommend that tour, by the way. It was really, really cool. Uh, such a cool time. We got to go to see Bourbon Pompeii and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of going back and saying what I didn't want to do. I'm doing it uh, anyway. Uh, it was just really, really cool. So I, I really want to go see Stitzel Weller. I really, really do. Uh, I don't think they even make anything outside of Blade and Bow that I own. <laughs> uh, I, it's so weird. 
uh, I don't know. What do what do they even make anymore? What does the Stitzel Willow Distillery even make anymore? It's got to be a pain to be Julian Van Winkle and like not be able to have that family, you know, icon kind of second home kind of place. If you read the book Pappy Land, which I've, you know, it's such a good book. All right. It's our products on the Stutzel Weller, but like, it's gotta be such, so like your grandfather has this like huge legacy in bourbon and like, you can't be where he was. And it was like supposed to be something that was brought through from the family. And it wasn't, you know, Julian's fault. And if you read the book Pappy Land, you'll know what happened. Um, so they make blade and bow. They make blade and bow 22, which I didn't even know was a thing until a few weeks ago. They make IW Harper Orphan Barrel. Okay. How do they make a scotch? That doesn't make sense. They're in Kentucky. How do they make a scotch? Okay. So not like almost nothing. What a strange. <laughs> so they, so essentially they make Orphan Barrel, Blade and Bow, and IW Harper. That's weird. Uh, that is very, very strange to me. But I would just, I want to go see the grounds, especially after reading Pappy Land and like being so into that book and like wanting to learn as much about Julian Van. He is just so fascinating to me. Uh, I I can't express how cool of a dude that guy is. Like I really idolize that guy. That dude has like no quit in him. (sighs) It's a really cool book. Uh, go go, seriously, go read it. If you haven't, it's really, really good. Uh, but I really wanted to see that one. I want to see castle and key, even though like I'm not a fan of the castle and key whiskey. But I want to see that. I also want to go see Jim Beam. We didn't do Jim Beam last time we were there, and I regret it. Uh, I think they were still closed during COVID. I know Wild Turkey is like, you can hear my dog. He's sleeping in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. He's <laughs> you hear it? Oh, he's so cute. He's, he'll be 18 in a few days. Uh, he's an old man. He's so sweet. Uh that was adorable. So I got thrown off by that. Um, I know wild Turkey was doing like a revamp their visitor center. And I want to go see that. I really do. I also want to go back to Bardstown. Bardstown was awesome. Uh, Bardstown was one of my favorite distilleries. I don't necessarily need to see a tour, but I love that restaurant. That fried chicken was like some of the best fried chicken I've ever had. And I'm from the South. (coughs) It was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I want to go back and spend more time at Four Roses. I'd like to see a, a tour of Four Roses, but like, I don't want like a, this is how we make our bourbon. These are the yeast strains that we use to make the unique flavors of Four Roses. I want to see like the grounds and I kind of want to go on a more comprehensive tour of the history of Four Roses. I think a lot of distilleries need to focus more on that. Uh, Buffalo Trace does it right. They do everything right. Speaking of which, some Weller foolproof right here. I haven't had this in a while. God, that's good. That is really, really good. I forgot how good that was. Holy moly, that's good. 114 proof. Kind of low for a full proof, but I guess that's what it goes into at the barrel is 114. Uh, what else do I want to do? I really want to see wild turkey. I really want to see... Um, I want to go... I want to go in, in February just to like... Because the weather will be the weather that I want when I go to Kentucky. But I want to go back during uh, like the holidays and see. We had planned to do that this year, go to Buffalo Trace and do one of the special events that they had. Um, turned out not being the case because we ended up moving. So that was a little, you know, a little annoying. Uh, I do want to go back and see Lux Row as well. Yeah. I also think I want to go, excuse me, to uh, High West. I know they're not in Kentucky. I'm just looking at my bottle of Midwinter's Night Tram. They're in Utah. That's right. Stupid. Um, I want to go. I don't know what else is in Utah other than Mormons, but I really want to go to High West. I really like their stuff. I like all of their stuff. I'm a huge fan of all of their whiskey. I've, outside of Redwood Empire, they may be, well, never mind. it's probably Buffalo Trace. I, I, I'm, this is so all over the place, but I don't care. I'm having a good time just sitting here chatting with you guys. I've had a good day today. Uh it's to tomorrow is Martin Luther King's birthday and uh, I got some news today and I'm excited about it and uh, I'm in a good mood. So it's uh, I'm a little all over the place, but it's fine. We're not here getting derailed by Timmy's nonsense. So it's, it's a really good episode. <laughs> uh, all right. What else? 
what else do I want to do? I want to go back to that Italian restaurant we went to. We went to a restaurant called Giuseppe's. Good God, it was good. That's where I found out how much I loved Campfire from High West. I love it. Um, yeah, that place was awesome. <laughs> that place was awesome. It had such an old school vibe to it, but like it was modern on the inside. It was awesome. I really liked that place. Uh, I also really want to go to Old Forester. Old Forester is one that I like. I have to get to the next time I'm there. I love their products so much. I don't talk about them as much, you know, on the podcast or do reviews of them as as much as I want to because I just don't have things to review from them. Like when I got the the Old Forester single barrel from MDP, I ran and raved how good that bottle was. It ended up in the top ten of the year, maybe top twenty. I think it was top ten. Uh, top ten of the year. It was just such a good bottle. I love everything they make. Like, they don't make anything bad. I cannot wait to get my hands on 1924. I'm excited to ultimately, whenever it is, get my hands on that. I, I cannot wait to get my hands on that. I was so pissed. I was in North Carolina, and it was dropping in the area that I was in. And I would go to one liquor store. They would say the website had it. Uh, then I'd get there, and they're like, yeah, we sold the last one like 10 minutes ago. And I was just like, oh, so annoyed. Uh, but I got lucky in that trip. I got a freaking old Fitz. So, well, you know, I can't complain too badly. I also want to go, I know, again, this is not in Kentucky, but, and it's way out of the way, but one day I'd like to, I really would like to go to Jack Daniels. Outside of Buffalo Trace, they're probably my favorite distillery. I really, really like everything Jack Daniels makes. I really do. I think like they make damn near ever, like everything that they have from them. I love, I actually almost bought a bottle of Gentleman Jack the other day, just cause I haven't had it and probably seven years and that was like my fancy whiskey when I didn't want to just buy something you know cheap to mix with coke and just you know either Jack Daniels or you know what else what else, the other cheap stuff that was on the bottom of the shelf um but I I, I don't know if it's any good like I, I really want to try I still like Jack old number seven so I can't imagine that I wouldn't like gentleman Jack but uh I really would like to go to Jack Daniels it'd be a lot of fun I don't know. If you've been to the Jack Daniels Distillery, somebody answer this question for me. You guys would know if anyone has been. If you've been down there, comment down below. Do they do special bottle releases at the distillery? Like when Jack 10 and 12 came out, did they do like a distillery release or was it just like, you know, like, you know, Buffalo Trace puts out E.A. Shaler Small Batch, but they don't put any of the other ones out. Is it like that where like they have like certain ones? I know they have like the distillery collection stuff there, but do they have special releases at the gift shop. I'm curious. I feel like they're such a big distillery. They probably wouldn't do it. Um, but who knows? Who knows? I want to go back to heaven Hill. Heaven Hill might be the distillery outside of four roses that puts out the most special products. They do a ton of stuff. We were there last time. We missed old fits by like 12 hours. As we were driving home, we saw that they had announced that they were, doing it for the following day. We we're like, God, we missed it. But we got one in the end. So it was cool. Um, who else? Do, what else this do I want to go to? I'm trying to think. I'm looking over here at my collection. My collection is to the right of me. I know this is not the normal setup, but I kind of wanted to do something a little different for the podcast so people wouldn't think it was like a, bur a review just if it autoplayed or whatever. So I'll have something behind me at some point. I'll, uh, I'll fix that. But I know it looks kind of boring, but I kind of want it that way just so it's like you're just kind of we're having a conversation and you know, it's just kind of you and me sitting here chitting, chilling and chit chatting. Who else do I want to go see? Who else? Who else? Who else? I think I hit all of them. The ones that I really want to see, but I really want to see old Forrester. Cause that's one I didn't get to. I did get to go to wild turkeys, like temporary gift shop. And that sucked. That really sucked. I really, I, you know what I was, I'm so I live in Orlando for guys who don't know. And I'm used to like really expensive touristy prices but I got to say, like, cocktails in, in Kentucky on the bourbon trail are insane. But the second you don't do something that's, like, at a distillery, reasonable reasonable prices. That's why I got to try Pappy, or I go, I say Pappy 10 just because it's easier to say than Old Rip Van Winkle 10-year. So I know it's not Pappy. Shut up. Uh, but I got to try that, and it was, like, $22, I think, for the poor. And I was like, absolutely. So it, it don't go to a lot of the touristy places. There's plenty of places in Kentucky that have really good food, really good drink and, and insanely good prices. I mean, that was 
so unexpected to be able to try old rip tenure for friggin' 22 bucks everywhere else. It was like at least a hundred dollars, which is insane. But you know, what are you going to do? I, I, I want to see what, uh, what wild Turkey can do. I feel like the, the, the temporary gift shop gotta just suck, right? It just can't be the full experience. I feel, when do they open the new one? I might wait for my trip to, to see that. Cause I really want to see the, the new, new wild Turkey gift shop. Uh, it looks like it's still, it's still being built. Uh, if anyone knows when this is going to be updated, let me know down below in the comment section and make sure while you're down there that you like and subscribe as well. Seriously, do that. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to go back to Buffalo Trace. We went to Buffalo Trace like every morning, uh, when we were there the first time because we really, really wanted to get E.H. Taylor. Because at that point, we had never had it before. And it's just like, up until recently, was like really hard to get in Florida. I don't know if them switching the distributors helped that out at all. But it's way easier now to get it uh, than it has ever been before. Like, it, you know, I can find it, not regularly, like every time I walk into a store. But I know there are certain stores and certain days that I can go in and get a bottle of VH Taylor for 45 bucks. Uh, I've also have enough connections now at this point with store owners and friends that I can kind of get it whenever I need it. So, but at the time we didn't, we didn't have a single bottle of it. So I went every single morning hoping that they would drop that in Blanton's cause I wanted a bottle, a second bottle of Blanton's, which I still have. It's still on my shelf. I like Blanton's. I don't think it's God's gift to bourbon, but I think it's really good. And I think people give it I think people overhype it and give it too much hate, but I also don't really see a ton of hype for it. Like at this point, I feel like people are kind of over it. Yeah. That's so funny to me because like people are like, it's so overhyped. I'm like, who, who's hyping it? Like, I don't, I don't ever see anyone talk positively about it, which is weird because it's good. Like there's nothing wrong with Blanton's. Anyone here who says they don't like Blanton's would buy it in a heartbeat. If you found it for 60 bucks, I think people are mad that it's $200 in some places, but that's not Blanton's fault. <laughs> that's greedy and shitty store owners' faults. So don't blame Buffalo Trace or Blanton's. Blame the people who are selling that bottle for $200 because that's ridiculous. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get the whole like, it's so overhyped. I, I only see people saying that it's overhyped and <laughs> that it's not good. So I don't know where people are getting off saying it's like the greatest thing ever. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with Blanton's. I have three bottles. I love it. I don't drink it at all, really. I had, I'm, I might have one. Uh, I like Plantain's Gold so much better, but that one is just one I don't think I'll ever get again. I don't know. I just, I never see it, even in allocated drops. I just never see it. That's it. That's kind of just what I want to talk about a little bit, like a loose plan of my uh, bourbon trip that I'm going to hopefully do in February. Uh, but yeah, I think that's kind of it. I just wanted to chit chat for a little bit and talk to you guys and kind of try this. Cause I don't, it's hard playing to the camera. Usually I'm okay playing to the camera when someone else is here, but I'm by myself. So it's a little weird <laughs> and I'm not doing a review. So I'm just kind of like staring, staring at the camera, but it's fun that I have this. And also I'll be completely transparent with you. I also just wanted to see if this setup would work for a podcast and if I could actually do one like this with the camera. So I have everything kind of plugged directly into the camera and I'm using my zoom as like a mixer. So it's, it's, it's content, but it's also, it's also kind of a test. I had no plans of what I was going to talk about right until I pressed record. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So thank you guys for watching this. Make sure if you do enjoy it, like, and leave a comment and I will see you guys on the next one until then, please do me a favor. Be safe out there. It's a crazy world we live in. Uh, love each other. Cheers.